picked out people who are natural leaders and have the skills needed for the particular position. It was decided that Jeremiah O'Brien would captain the ship to chase down the British on board the HMS Margareta. They fortified the railing of one of Ichabod Jones's sloops in the unity with wooden planks. Okay, what's the part Margareta for her soup or something? Oh, what's the one? <laughs> that's coming up. Oh, you'll hear it again. Benjamin Foster went to East Falls and his crew of men boarded the schooner named the Falmouth Packet. The plan was for both ships to chase down the fleeing British. On Monday morning, volunteers boarded each of the ships and they set sail to chase down the Margareta and capture her and the crew if at all possible. Some might say this was reckless bravery, but these men were destined for freedom and liberty. As the Margareta was attempting to flee, she broke her main boom. What's her brain, main boom? That's the part that's attached to the bottom of the sail. It's like a big John Barry Sr. of Hadley Lake was shot in the face with a musket ball that exited behind his ear. He received one of the first American military pensions, $8 a month. Ebenezer Beal lost both legs to one of Captain Moore's grenades. Isaac Taft and James Cole needed months of medical treatment from Dr. William Shaliner. These men knew the price of freedom. This was the first naval battle of the Revolutionary War, just 54 days since the Battle of Lexington and only five days before the Battle of Bunker Hill. Suddenly shots fired from the stern of the Margareta, killing Mr. McNeil and mortally wounding James Coolbrith. As Benjamin Foster's crew on the Falmouth Packet arrived, Jeremiah O'Brien ordered his men to pull alongside the Margareta for a second time. He ordered all men with arms to board and those with pitchforks and axes and size to board behind them. The British Captain Moore continued throwing hand grenades at the Americans. The battle lasted about an hour and ended at noon on June 12, 1775, when Jeremiah O'Brien demanded that all those who were willing to surrender lay down their arms. At this point, Jeremiah O'Brien hauled down the first British flag of the American Revolution. 
British ships in Nova Scotia were ordered to Machias to inquire of the news that His Majesty's ship, the Margareta, had been captured. This was the first naval battle of the Revolutionary War, just 54 days since the Battle of Lexington and only five days before the Battle of Bunker Hill. That following week on the evening of June 16, 1775, New England Patriots from Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New Hampshire met in Charlestown, Massachusetts. They stood up to the mighty British Army. Those Patriots were farmers, lawyers, doctors, and slaves, all fighting beside each other. They marched over Bunker Hill and up Breeds Hill. The Battle of Bunker Hill actually took place on Breeds Hill. The morning of the 17th, the British made three attempts to overrun the Patriots. On the third and final attempt, the British pushed the Patriots off the hilltop, but they had lost a thousand of their 2,500 soldiers to do so. British General Gage wrote, the loss we have sustained is greater than we can bear. John Adams' wife, Abigail, had watched the smoke rise from the battlefield and she wrote, the day, perhaps the decisive day has come on which the fate of America stands. A month after we captured the Margareta, two more British ships were sent to Machias to gather information on the HMS Margareta and the status of the rebellion in Machias. This was on July of 1775. Machias was well aware that they were at war with the British and they had begun to prepare for the attack. When the king's ships, the Diligent and the Tatamagooch entered Machias in July of 1775, they were captured. Captain Stephen Smith, Jeremiah O'Brien, and Benjamin Foster played key roles in the successful capture. These men and the men of Machias had become American war heroes. Captain Stephen Smith and some of his men were in the area of Fort O'Brien when they observed the Diligent and the Tatamagooch drop anchor near Clark's Point. The Americans in Machias were seamen, woodsmen, who realized that the British were likely going to shore for fresh drinking water before sailing into the village. The American patriots carefully snuck through the woods along the shoreline and ambushed the British soldiers when they came ashore. As a result of their heroic efforts, these additional two warships were captured. Benjamin Foster and Jeremiah O'Brien each sailed one of the captured ships upriver to the village of Machias and anchored them just below the falls. The people of Machias now had three British ships in their possession, the Margareta, the Diligent, and the Tatamagooch. There was a proud sense of accomplishment that was almost celebratory but everyone also knew that they had drawn the line in the sand and the British were likely to return, and this time with much more firepower. The captured British soldiers were held in Machias and put on a ship bound for the Palnaborough Courthouse, where the prisoners carved the image of their ship into the wooden wall. The carving is still visible on the wall today. The British were then marched south to the Provincial Congress and jailed. Messengers were sent to the Continental Congress to notify them that Machias had captured the three British ships and the soldiers on board. The Machias Committee of Safety used the captured British ships to defend Machias Bay and to intercept British barges and ships carrying supplies between Boston and Nova Scotia. The Declaration of Independence had not yet been signed, but the British already viewed Machias as a band of pirates. 
Some referred to the town as a hornet's nest. There was no doubt that the liberty-loving people of Machias were becoming well-known and highly regarded as patriots and frontiersmen. Jeremiah O'Brien and Benjamin Foster were sent to headquarters in Cambridge to report their capture of the three British ships. They took the British prisoners with them, sailing to Falmouth and then marching them 10 days overland to Cambridge to avoid being captured. They arrived in Cambridge on August of 1775 and reported the news to George Washington, who had just assumed command of the Continental Army. Jeremiah and Benjamin were then sent to Watertown, where the Provincial Congress was in session. It was there that Jeremiah was appointed captain of the Marines of the Colony of Massachusetts. He was ordered to use the captured ships to capture more British ships. That fall, Jeremiah captured a ship that had been taken by the British. O'Brien's ships, the Liberty, and the Diligent became known as the Flying Squadron.